Hi DIY friends! Today I'm going to show you how to transform inexpensive Dollar Tree finds with super cheap scrapbook paper. If you're new here, I want to say welcome. If you're not new and you're part of the DIY family, I want to say thank you again for coming back to join some more creative time with me. My name is Shannon from the DailyDIYer.com. I also want to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get to creating. Cricut makes smart cutting machines that work with an easy to use app to help you design and personalize almost anything from custom cards, unique apparel, everyday items, and so much more. If you are new to Cricut, that is no problem. It requires no design experience. They have you creating as soon as you open the box and you learn as you make. It's super easy and not complicated. Now we're gonna head into Dollar Tree and grab some really simple and basic items that they have usually every day. We're gonna head over to the spring section and grab some paper straws. Also the seasonal section should have some kind of pool noodles. We're gonna need some styrofoam and these cool wood rings from the crafters square. Then this first project, we're gonna make some cute springtime paper straws. I wanted to start off with a really simple project to show you how easy it is. I'm using the green standard grip cutting mat here and applying a piece of white cardstock. And then this is the easy to use app called Design Space. It even has a flower shop section which has all kinds of pre-made designs that you just throw into the program and it'll go ahead and cut it for you. But there's ideas too for home decor, for card making, felt flowers, paper flowers. And I love this because if you just need an idea, you can head in there for ideas too. It's almost like its own little Pinterest. I found this really simple and basic flower design. They're called felt wax flowers. Now, just because it says felt doesn't mean you have to cut them out of felt. It's basically just a design and a project that they've provided. However, we're gonna cut ours on cardstock. Now this already came set up for us, so we just can send it on over to the machine, making sure we say we want our cardstock on a mat. Now this has three different colors. I'm only gonna be using two, so don't feel like you have to use the colors that are in there and the amount of uh, projects that are in there, you can kind of customize that too. And we're gonna be using white and a really pale yellow. I'm just feeding my mat with a cardstock on it into my Cricut Explorer 3 and letting it do its thing once I've sent it over. It cuts pretty quickly, especially whenever you're talking these small little mini flowers. We're going to remove the outside part of our cardstock and then remove the design that it cut. It helps to use your weeding tool to help you pry off those flowers from the cutting mat. You can look and see how cute those are. Now we need to work on the center of our flowers. I'm using a pale yellow cardstock here, putting it on my green cutting mat and sending that through my Explore 3 again and then just unloading it, same process. You pop your paper off, kind of flipping your mat upside down, peeling off the cardstock, and then coming in with your weeding tool to help you pop those little mini circles right off of your mat. And then here we have all of the perfect size little circles that are gonna fit right in the middle of our flowers. We're also gonna grab these paper straws from Dollar Tree. They have them for different holidays and seasons. They also have them in the kitchen section in different colors too, so check both places. And then I have a little special tip and trick for you. This is a fun way to kind of curl the petals of your flower. This is a stylus, it has two different ends on it, a smaller end and a larger end. I'm using the larger end to just roll right in the center of the paper flowers and it fluffs those petals right up. It's a really cool technique and I just have a little mat under it so it gives a little bit underneath. And then we're gonna take some adhesive here and just plop those centers right into the middle of our flowers. Look how cute those are. So tiny and they're all perfectly exactly the same size, which I love that the Cricut gives for us. Then we're gonna attach our little flowers onto our Dollar Tree paper straws. Again, just using some adhesive here, a tape runner. You could use glue. Just make sure you're putting your flowers down a little bit because obviously you're gonna need to use the upper end of your straw and you also want your flowers to hang outside of the cup so you see them. So keep that in mind as you are putting your flowers onto your straws. This is a really great beginner project since it's already loaded into the Cricut Design Space. I will link this project down in the description box below so you can go straight to your Cricut Design Space and be able to load it up and just send a couple pieces of paper through your cutting machine and it will make those flowers for you. You can see in the background too, I made some larger flowers to just use as an accent for this display, but sky's the limit here, super cute for spring and Easter. 
Yay for Dollar Tree carrying these awesome burlap banners now. They had three different styles. I picked the one with the more dovetail cut at the bottom. Perfect because they also come with six flags, which works out perfect for us to make a spring banner. One letter on each one of those flags. I picked a fun font and I also want to share this. I'm going to put this into my Cricut Design Space profile. So you can actually go follow me over there. I have one project in there already, but I'm going to be continually adding some new ones and this banner will be one of them. Next, you'll cut those letters out of Cricut iron on and then heat press or iron those letters on one letter on each one of those banner flags. So this looks super cute already, but pretty simple plain basic. We're going to take it up a notch and add some color. I went into my Cricut Design Space, found this really beautiful paper spring flower wreath. And I didn't necessarily need to make a wreath, but I did want those flowers and leaves. So I sent all of this through my Cricut machine, cutting out one color at a time. You can see I have some yellow flowers, some pink flowers, some green leaves, and also black little centers for the flowers. And what I recommend is when once you get it all cut out, then start separating everything out into the different sizes. That'll make it easier once we go to assemble all of the flowers. So here's what we got so far, enough to make six flowers with some leaves and also the center of the flowers. Pretty simple to send it all through because it does all the work for you. Now we need to do our work on our end and assemble these flowers. So what I did is used a hot glue gun. That's gonna be a really great adhesive for this. So nothing falls apart and it's gonna hold up pretty well. This is the fun part too, where you can kind of mix and match and add whatever layers you want, make them bigger, make them smaller. And this was just a really fun process. They all came together really, really quickly. And look how fun and pretty these are, especially with the texture around the edges and they're kind of fluffed up. We're gonna take our hot glue gun again and that's what we're gonna use to attach one flower onto each one of the banner pieces. That pop of color on this banner is what really brought it to life. It was super easy to make. Also loved that it was a Dollar Tree banner that we just spruced up with some vinyl and some inexpensive cardstock. I put mine on my mantle and layered it up with some wood beads, kind of a Easter bunny, spring Eastery look here, but how beautiful and super duper simple too. As I was browsing the Cricut Design Space, I came across these paper succulents. I love succulents. These looked so real. I had to give it a try. I grabbed some of these terracotta pots from Dollar Tree. You can also find these at all kinds of different craft stores, uh, department stores in the gardening section. So keep your eye out. You can maybe even get a better deal there when you buy them in bulk. This is what it looked like when I loaded it into my Cricut Design Space. I made three different colors so I could do three different terracotta pots. These are the colors that I chose. Again, just adding the cardstock onto my green cutting mat and then sending them through my machine one color at a time. I know I keep saying this is easy, but it really is. You literally just stick your cardstock onto a mat, put it into your machine, press play, and it cuts out whatever was on your screen, whether you're using a tablet or a computer. Look how perfect and precise those cuts are. And I would say if you're get, just getting started, cardstock is a great thing to start with because it's inexpensive. You can kind of go through it if you want to test some things out. Um, and it, you just cut it out, take it off the mat, and it's ready to go versus vinyl that you're going to have to do a few more steps with. Um, but it's still really easy. If you want to do vinyl, you can do heat transfer. There's so many different things. Now let's get back to these succulents. So what I did is I stacked them in order once I pulled them off the mat to make it easier for when it's time to assemble them. So one of these succulent petals needed to be kind of glued over to the other one. And why do you do that? Well, that's going to give it some fluff. You can also take a popsicle stick and run the popsicle stick up the sides or up the fronts of your petals. That way they kind of curl upwards, which is kind of more of a natural succulent look. And then you can go ahead and start layering your petals one on top of each other. Again, just using some hot glue to do that. 
There's just something very calming and therapeutic about making paper flowers and seeing them come to life as you layer them. You can really see the succulent go from paper to one that looks a lot, very realistic succulent plant here. And it just looks so, so cute. I did those different colors so I could get some variation, but you could even take some ink and kind of rub them on the edges of the petals for even more of a uh, realistic look and variation, but look how cute those are. I even made one a little bit bigger since I had a larger size terracotta pot, this one here, to attach them. Instead of putting styrofoam or anything in there, I just added some hot glue onto the edge of the pot and then laid the flower right on top there. And it looks like literally a succulent plant is growing out of the pot. It is so realistic. There's other succulents that you can find in Cricut Design Space. You can kind of make your own faux succulent paper garden in and it would be adorable. I'm telling you what, when you start exploring the Cricut Design Space website and app, you're going to find so many fun projects you're going to want to try. And this one, I had to. They are the cutest flower string lights. Dollar Tree even carries string lights that you can grab. Or if you can't find them there, check the floral section at the craft store and at the department store. Or hit your Christmas stash and pull some out because these are great year round, not just for Christmas time. I'm pulling on this strand of lights to straighten it all out. And then we're gonna start cutting our flowers, which we just loaded in our Cricut Design Space from that project. We're only gonna need three colors for this. I'm using green, we're going to make some pink flowers, and then we're also gonna use some yellow for the centers. But of course you can mix and match, do rainbow colors if you want, or stick with something a little more simple like white little daisies, whatever matches your season, your decor, or your celebration. So this went really quick since we only did three colors. These yellow little starbursts here are gonna be the center of our flowers. So now that we have all of those cut, we can start assembling these pieces. And we want these to be able to slide onto our lights. So to do that, I took a regular X-Acto knife and cut an X right in the center of the flower. I did the exact same thing with the yellow centers to the flowers, just cutting small little X's. We're gonna take our lights and we're going to push those X's down onto the flower, onto the lights, and then use a little bit of adhesive to piece the flower together to add the leaf on and also attach the yellow to the center there. So quick and easy, but wait until you see once I get all these flowers on how beautiful it is. I would recommend skipping and just doing every other light because otherwise you're going to have a lot of flowers that are going to be bunched together and the little accent of light in between the flowers just gives it more of a glow. But this is what it looks like once it's all done. I kind of intertwine mine with some green garland and tucked in a few speckled Easter eggs. How beautiful and pretty is this? just adds a little extra touch of light and sparkle to your spring and Easter decor. What in the world are we going to need a pool noodle for? Well, we're going to grab a green one and make a giant sunflower. And this pool noodle is going to be the stem. So I found this 3D sunflower in Cricut Design Space, pulled it up. This is what it looks like once you get it in the on the canvas. I didn't need the center, so I took off the brown, all the brown paper, and we're just gonna do the yellow and the green so we can make the flower. I also scaled it down just a little bit so I could get as many petals into the least amount of pieces of paper that I could. I ended up using 10 pieces of yellow cardstock to make this giant flower. Obviously, giant means you're gonna need a lot. So once uh, I had them all cut out, I made sure to go through and stack each one in its size. That way everything was organized. You can see here there's three different sizes, three different circles um, that we're going to be working with. So 12 petals per circle. Now these are gonna be cut out with this little notch at the bottom. We're gonna take our hot glue, put a little hot glue down there on one corner, and then we're going to fold over the other side into the glue. That's gonna pop our petals and give it that shape. Then we're going to take each petal and we're going to hot glue that onto each one of the notches on the circle. Look how cute this is, it's adorable. This is just one layer though. Obviously you saw we have three circles. So we need to make 
three different layers. Make sure that your circles are lining up with the size of your petals. And also the middle one, you're going to fold over that little split at the bottom a little bit more. And the last layer, you're gonna fold it over as much as you can. So you get more of a pop in your petals as each layer stacks up. So here are the three layers here. And when you stack them, you also want to offset them. So each layer you kind of want to push to the side so each petal is in the center of each next layer's petals. We're gonna use some hot glue to attach those all together and look how fun this is turning out. I also use my nails to kind of curve those petals backwards to give it more fluff. Back in Dollar Tree, I needed a center for my sunflower and I found these round styrofoam pieces. They come in a set of two. We just need one for this project. And we're gonna take some brown chalk paint. This is the color Truffle. I'm gonna use my foam paintbrush and just paint this whole piece of styrofoam. Definitely recommend tapping your brush up and down on the top of the styrofoam to get down into all those crevices. Once that has time to sit and dry, we're gonna take our hot glue and glue the center of this right to the middle of the flower. So I've been wanting something like this for my wall in my crafting space. I love that pop of yellow. It almost looks like a sunshine, probably why it's called a sunflower. So I love this. I may make a few more giant flowers to put up there, but I love this pop of happiness with the rainbow colors up there. So this is just one idea, but if you remember, we were grabbing a pool noodle from Dollar Tree. We're still going to do that. I wanna show you how to make a real big stem for your flower if you want to use it that way. So I just took my green pool noodle, cut it down a little bit. It's probably two, two and a half feet long. And then I took a green, a big bundle of green pipe cleaners, put a rubber band at the top and the bottom, and then we're going to take one in and kind of spread those pipe cleaners out, add some hot glue to that and attach that to the back of our sunflower. That's gonna give us a little bit of movement with our stem. So the hot glue is gonna help hold this stem down, but we're gonna reinforce it with some green duct tape on the back just to be sure. So this is what we have so far. Then we're gonna take our pool noodle and we're going to place the whole of that right down into the pipe cleaners. And we're gonna leave a little bit of a gap at the top so we have some movement up there and it will bend. We're gonna use some hot glue to make sure we attach the pool noodle to those pipe cleaners. One last thing we cut out with our Cricut machine are the leaves for this sunflower. We're just gonna take some hot glue and add that to the back of the flower. You could probably also add some of these to the pool noodle as leaves on the stem too. But look how big this thing is. It is so cute. Of course, you can make it even bigger depending on how you size your petals within Cricut Design Space. You can make it a lot bigger, you can make it a lot smaller, but how cute and fun is this? It'd be fun for or your spring decor or spring party. Or you can do like I do and just put it right on your wall. I love this pop of sunshiny yellow in my craft space. Now back at Dollar Tree, I found these cute wood rings in the crafter square. We're gonna use them to make some really fun and colorful springtime napkin rings. So I had some leftover paper flowers from our spring banner, or one of our projects from earlier I didn't wanna get rid of. So I kept those, I'm gonna layer those and then found these this awesome craft string. It's more like embroidery floss that Dollar Tree now carries. And I took a button that I had and I'm just feeding that embroidery floss into the button, tied a knot, cut that down. And we're gonna use that for the center of the flower, just hot gluing that right into the flower. Then it's just as easy as hot gluing your paper flower onto your wood ring and you have a quick and easy and super inexpensive napkin ring. To make your napkin, this is actually a piece of fabric from Dollar Tree that I'm using as a napkin. I just grabbed the center and then pulled it up, then put that point up through the napkin ring and then that was just quick and easy and inexpensive and a cute way to dress up a table 
or create for a party. I just love this. The spring colors are just my vibe right now. And I thought another cute idea to throw in here is also to cr create a quick placemat. So this is another design in Cricut Design Space and a big flower that I cut out. It also had this sort of outline that I did in a darker pink that I layered on top. I love doing that because it really gives it some dimension and some character, makes it special. So to attach these together, I'm using a tape runner and just going around some of the big points in the top and the circle around the bottom just to make sure it's not going to come apart lining it up and then pressing it down and it just becomes a really cute way to layer your placemats and add a pop of color to your tablescape if you have any questions at all about Cricut or Cricut Design Space, leave them down in the comments below for me. I'd be happy to help you there, especially if you've been on the fence about purchasing a Cricut machine. I absolutely love mine. I love the quality. I love how personal and professional everything turns out. I hope all of these ideas inspired you to start digging through your own scrapbook paper stash to start creating. And again, I'll make sure to link all the supplies that I used in today's video down in the description box below. Thank you so much again for joining me today, and I hope you have a very creative day. See you in the next one.